Conference. The parable apparently looks a little uh, strange in the sense the sower does not prepare the land before he sows. Who goes and throws the seed in a path or where the rocky ground or there is a thorn bush? Rather, he prepares well the ground and then he sows. Why does this then, the Lord prefers to say this parable? The only explanation that we can have is uh, the generosity and unconditional love of the Father to give his word to everyone, irrespective of how we are prepared, irrespective of the state of condition in which we live. He is so generous and he shares his word among us. It's up to us now to how we receive it and then have him with us. The parable also is self-explanatory in a sense. Luke and Gospel gives this explanation also, the interpretation also gives. Whereas if you see the Gospel of Mark, maybe the source Gospel, it doesn't tell all this explanation. It begins here, if you can, and then at the end it says, those who are years let them here. Concludes with that. Whereas Luke goes on to explain this so that it enables the disciples to understand this parable better. Of course, we have the normal understanding, very clear, obviously, from the interpretation that we hear that um, how some, some are fallen here and there and how they are choked, how the anxiety, how people without any base are unable to do it. And finally, those people who receive the word of God finally bear fruit. In any growth progress or in any set of uh, institution or an entity that grows, they measure in three ways. First is the growth. They call it what? Growth. Growth in a sense from small to big. Because, for example, in a school, if you have to have a, have a growth, if you think of a growth, the number of students who go up or the number of classrooms that go up gradually or the project that takes place. But is that all? No, it has to go to progress, growth to progress. Now, how that is achieved? Any growth without proper ethics, proper discipline will not have the progress that it desires for. So any growth that is there, it has to be in the proper way when it is achieved with the discipline and ethics that we call it progress. But is that enough growth and progress? It has to be productive. It has to have a success. So that leads us to, so every growth leads to success. It has to have a success, then we need to have usefulness of that. So students who go out of the school should become good citizens. The students who pass out should become useful to the society. That is the kind of uh, growth that we think in them so that they become useful to the society and they bring the world to a better place. So this is the way we look at it. We look at growth, progress and then success. It applies to all of us. It applies to all our formation. It applies to all the institutions that we have. Every growth has to have this progress. You know, that is a war effort that we are making, you know, but it has been the right way. We have to follow certain principles that are well set and then which we are convinced of is acceptable to all. And then that leads to success. That is not enough just to stop with that, but it has also produced results. In our congregation or in our institution, we find conferences are very protective, some of them. You know? But some conferences we know that they are least protective about it. Anything, any matter. They just, you know, life goes on. But you know, they don't think of doing something you know, bringing something to society, bringing change, you know, being productive. I think if you are not productive in our lives, I think we become redundant, we become useless. And this is what we need to understand. In every formation house, when we think of this growth and progress, 
we must see we, we are worried that the students should go to the last stage become good priests not only good priests also should go and perform well in their missions that they are assigned to later on and become good priests and useful converts that's what we are aiming at and then we are worried about it yes we are all working towards this sometimes we have the temptation in the process to overjudge sometimes in the process and we begin to make assumptions and things like that a man uh, fell in love with a uh, an actress and uh, she too fell in love with him and then uh, they were about they were engaged about to get married but then this fellow began to have some doubts because she was an actress about her character he wanted to find out whether her character has been good and so he employs a private detective to find out without revealing his identity who he was and how he was related to her he employs a private detective and then asks him to give a report after a month after a month a report comes to him and in the report a very positive report about the person she is very good very loyal very very much uh, uh, disciplined in their life though she is in this uh, a life of uh, being an actress but yet she has been maintaining her dignity and all that and finally he concludes is one fellow who has come in his life who is about to get married that fellow's life is questionable that's what the detective concludes very often sometimes we have our own baggage and we sometimes try to push it on to others without looking at our baggage that are there we are very judgmental sometimes we want to others to be better we want them to be changed we want them to change we want them to come in terms with uh, our expectations whereas our own baggage sometimes uh, keeps us away let us look into our own baggage and see whether am i also growing am i also progressing am i also being productive in my life even though i might have passed certain age i must have gone about but yet it is good for us to understand and see that is what the lord is asking us to do today that you become useful be productive the more even in the gospel finally when we see he says that some yield 30% some yield 60% some yield 100 fold yes even in the before that when the disciples ask jesus he admonishes them he gives an admonition then then explains and today for us as we sit here to evaluate ourselves god is also sometimes admonishes us think of yourself think first and then go about love your comrades love your enemies and then go about be patient with them the final conclusion of the parable is of course patience and endurance we need to be patient we need to wait for the results to happen you also know in the other parable where the weeds also come about along with the seeds and the lord tells us to be patient this is an important element that we need to understand in formation we are to be very very patient extremely patient and endure the hardships that are there because we do not get to see the results as in other institutions or in parishes rather we need to endure that is the special vocation for which we are called for and let us dedicate ourselves and ask the lord to guide and put and take us forward so that we are able to fulfill the mission that has been entrusted to us